Hi, and welcome to Woods Creek Workshop. And our dad's name is Yuxiao. Make sure you liked and subscribed and turned on the notification bell. Here's how you can find out the exact center height of your spindle relative to your cross slide. Put a material in there and turn it, doesn't matter what diameter, it can be aluminum, steel, one inch, half inch, whatever, and take the measurement of the diameter. In my case that's 0 0.7505 inches. Now divide by two. Now take your center, your height gauge, referencing off of the top of the cross slide, measure the height to the top of the material that you just turned. And in this case it's 4.0235 inches. So take that number and subtract the half of this diameter that you got earlier and in my case, that's 4.0235 minus 0.3752, and I get 3.6483 inches. That's the distance from the top of the cross slide to the center of the material I just turned. And effectively, that's uh, high, how high the spindle is. Now, once you have that measurement, you can use to make tool height gauge. Um, you can use that to set the height of your cutting tool, whatever you need to. But you don't have to guess or you don't have to rely on your old set of eyes anymore. You have that exact number. When you're holding softer materials on your chuck, it's important to have a nice set of copper covers for your jaws. When I went to make mine, uh, I didn't have sheet of copper and anything that I had to I could buy were pretty expensive uh, 12 inches by 12 inches and bigger and you just don't need that much and they were 20 30 dollars uh, for that size so I just went to Lowe's and got myself a small 6 inch piece of copper tubing and made mine out of it now it's a lot easier to work this if you heat it with a torch and uh, temper it back. This one happens to be three quarter inch diameter I believe and uh, was really easy to work with and it was six six inch long piece was I think five bucks much cheaper than buying sheets so Go get yourself a piece of pipe and save some money. When you cut your precision shim stock to a certain size that you need, you're often left with a burr that's rolled over along the edge that you just cut. And if you just ignore that and use it, uh, you may not get the exact thickness that you're looking for. So what I do is take a hardened pen material and gently drag over the end, the edge, and the burr is gone. There's no, nothing I can feel. And it's ready for use. If you don't have already, consider making yourself a cover for your apron. This is simply made of uh, 18 gauge, but you can use 18 gauge or 20 gauge sheet metal and you can buy them for a couple bucks. I just bent, hand bent this. You don't need any special tools. And what it does is that when you're turning all the hot chips and um, cast iron and all that won't fall directly onto your ways and also uh, prevents the paint and it just prevents your uh, apron getting from getting all damaged um, so I just like to have mine you know my tools looking good and also it helps uh, with uh, keeping the chips off of the way so it makes it a lot easier to clean just held on there with couple I think these are 10 
1024 screws and uh, I drilled holes for the ball oilers so you might want to make one for your lathe. A while back I received a sticker from Emma Rissen in Australia. She has a YouTube channel called Emma Spare Room Machine Shop. So I'm going to add her sticker to the board here. Right below Dudley Toolwright. Next to uh, Kit Fenner and Jim Deadman. She won't be lonely right there. She'll have good company. When you're machining a taper on your lathe and you don't want to run into the chuck with your cutting tool, try this next time. Move the carriage over and extend the compound all the way until it physically won't move. Now you can move the carriage back in your cross slide and set it just before it touches the chuck or however much safety gap you want. Now move the compound back. You're ready to start cutting the taper and because you set the compound at its extreme end it won't let you go any further therefore you won't hit the jaws on your chuck. Sometimes removing just tiny bit of material can be tricky especially when you're using the cross slide to feed in. Instead next time try using your compound slide. Turn the compound at an angle and use the compound dial to feed in the tool bit and you'll notice that it moves in towards the stock at a lot slower rate because of the geometry. Put one of these rare earth magnets in your cutting oil cup. It'll keep all the chips together so you don't keep picking up the chips and applying to the new material that you're machining. Plus the magnet will help keep the cup in its place and it doesn't move around so easily. You don't have to spend $50 and buy parallel keepers. You can simply take metal bending that comes in wooden pallets and shipments, cut it to length, and you can bend them easily by hand and you have separators. And they'll spread out if you apply pressure so they have quite a bit of range. But while you're at it, make a couple different sizes uh, so that you have more flexibility and it's free. To square up a rough block, you're supposed to put a metal wire between the movable jaw and the block since none of the surfaces are parallel. But sometimes that causes a dent on the aluminum blocks. So what I do is take electrical wires which I have plenty of uh, left over from working on the shop. Simply remove the insulation however much I need and I have plenty of copper wire now and use that to secure the block and now it won't damage the aluminum block. I've had this compressor for about 15 years now and it served me very well. But one thing it's not known for is running smooth and vibration free. In fact, I can feel all that vibration right through the floor onto my feet. And it just can't be good for other equipments around it. So I know a lot of people spend uh, a lot of money buying specialized dampening feet or make uh, their own versions out of hockey pucks. For me, I'm lazy. So I just went and got some of these. These are sold as farming belt uh, from Tractor Supply and it is sold by feet per foot. And I bought 
two feet, I guess, worth, and cut it into four pieces. It's about 3 16th of an inch long. I'm sure you can find it at your local farm stores as well. It's kind of rubbery, but it's really made for a farming belt, conveyor, uh, conveyor belt, that kind of sort of thing. And I just slide it underneath the feet and vibration goes away. I'm Asian, but I still don't like to do math. So whenever I can avoid it, I create cheat sheets. This particular one is surface foot per minute chart. Uh, there are cast iron, tool steel, mild steel, aluminum, and brass. And what the surface foot per minute would be a good starting point. And then I put the diameter of the material that I, uh, I would be using. So quarter inch to four inches. And I used the Microsoft Excel and created what the RPM uh, RPM should be for those materials at those diameters. Green means uh, high speed steel and um, yellow means carbide. So I just noticed this is HHS, HSS. Anyway, I have this printed laminated uh, one on my lathe and one by the mill. And I just have to take a quick look. Boom, I know what RPMs I should start out at. I don't have to punch calculators. So you might want to think about that. In fact, if you comment on this video and email me, I will email you a copy of this so you don't have to do any work. I'll email it to you and you can use it however you want. I've been working off and on for the last two years on this milling machine. This is 1973 Inco Bridgeport copy. I took the surface all the way down to bare cast iron, uh, applied filler and uh, lots of coats of filler, and repainted it. But would you believe me if I repainted this with this foam roller? That's right. Uh, it turned out really nice and smooth, and I just hate spraying. So, I didn't spray paint and using brush, nah, use these foam smooth foam rollers from your hardware store. It actually is very forgiving and gives you a nice even smooth surface and restores that uh, the glossiness in your paint. Sometimes I also like to use catalyst hardener for enamel paint. Uh, it increases, so it increases gloss, hardness, and reduce dry time. Now you can buy this at Tractor Supply Store or pretty much any hardware store. You mix it in with your paint, like it works with pretty much all enamel, um, like Rust-Oleum, Krylon. I used uh, Sherwin Williams All Surface Enamel, and it really speeds up the uh, drying process. But be sure you read all the warnings on the can and follow their directions uh, so you don't kill yourself. How's that for a tip? I know none of these tips are anything earth shattering, but they're practical and useful. And I wish somebody had shared those with me years ago. It would have made my life easier. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and uh, please like and subscribe and comment. Let me know what I can do differently to make the videos more interesting. Thank you very much for watching.